Somalia is still a very challenging place, but there's a lot to be hopeful about. A lot of the key ingredients for building sustainable peace are starting to form. We have a new government in place right now, and the president has made peace building and security his number one priority. He's doing so by leading military operations throughout regions that have been strongholds of the terrorist groups of Al-Shabaab for the last 15 years. And just in the last eight months, areas, towns that have not been accessible for the last 15 years have now been liberated. We have an overwhelming majority of young people that live in Somalia. And through the digitalization and the connection that young people have right now, access to internet, they are becoming much more aware. Young people are expressing their political dissent online. They are organizing. They are creating their own tables of leadership and structure outside of the government that still is excluding them. And I think that the, role, the leadership of women that we see so visibly in Somalia that are refusing to be silenced any longer, all of these different actors organizing towards a better respected future give me hope that peace is within reach now more than ever before. This award presents a very big opportunity, not just for us in Somalia, but also for many other peace-building actors and human rights defenders that are working to solve some of the seemingly most intractable conflicts of the world, where we see that there is an evidence base behind these micro level solutions that we've been able to lead that can be platformed and also be a shiny example for new and emerging conflicts across the world. Countries like mine in Somalia, where almost every solution has been tried and tested. We've had more than 15 different peace agreements. And we realize that the normative and outdated framework for building peace is no longer fit for purpose in my country or other countries that are also facing similar types of violence. So this platform and the spotlight that the prize provides is an opportunity for the world to rethink what are the new principles for building peace? What can we learn from countries that have been ravaged by conflict? And recognizing that local solutions need local actors to be involved. So for us and for peace building organizations like us, it's an opportunity to think differently. At the core of it, we're a peace-building organization. Everything that we do contributes to peace. Peace within and peace without. So we invest in creating reprieve and support systems. We look at alternative methods for trauma healing, the ocean therapy, sports for development, to really prepare young people that are living in a context of cyclical trauma to be able to escape those challenges. But we also provide services right now that are not being provided by the states, whether it's economic empowerment, we invest and build schools. Somalia still has no public schooling system. It's 100% privatized. So we build schools and we sustain them through social businesses because we believe education is the key to transitioning out of this conflict. We document our approaches rigorously and leverage our convening power on the continent to share that with other organizations. We're looking at nature-based solutions to conflict mitigation, recognizing that Somalia is at the nexus of two twin crises, the crisis of security and the crisis of the biosphere. Somalia is at the nexus of climate change and conflict, so we're creating strategies for adaptation, and this is important. And one of the things that this prize presents as a big opportunity is learning from countries like Germany that have made so much strides towards climate change. So in just a short period of time, the last three years, the Almond Peace Center has begun connecting with other organizations that are in some of the hardest to reach, most conflict-laden countries in sub-Saharan Africa. And through that, we established a network called Peace by Africa, where it's grassroots organizations like ourselves sharing experiences, cooperating on border projects, and collectively leveraging the indigenous and traditional conflict resolution strategies that exist on the continent. So yes, there's a movement growing. There's more than 120 organizations that are part of this network now across Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon, and Chad, Uganda, Burundi, DRC. And this is very important because these are conflicts that have lasted for more than 20 to 35 years. And each one of our countries 
is recognizing that the status quo is not going to create peace. So together we're leveraging our voice and our best practices and hoping that we can also share what we know with newer conflicts around the world. This prize is not just for the contributions to peace building that we're doing in Somalia, but it has created a portal of immersive empathy for people here in the Hessian state to also see the challenges that we are fighting in Somalia are not ones that this country and this state is immune to. The plight for justice, for equality, for protection for women and girls is one that people are fighting for every single day here as well too. And there's ways that we can support each other. I was very encouraged to hear about Germany's adoption of the feminist foreign policy. That is necessary for promoting the political leadership of women here, but also for promoting the political leadership of women in Somalia so they can be a part of ensuring the processes that ensure their well-being. So our lives are not too different. There are universal languages, and there's a role that we all have to play in it. And visiting young students in, in Germany while I was here has been reaffirming of the message that my late mentor, Mr. Kofi Annan, said that you are never too young to lead. And I saw a lot of young people in Frankfurt keen to get involved, even from a distance. Absolutely. And they saw that issues like climate change affect them in their state of Hessian differently than they do in my country, in Somalia, but that the solutions require a global compact. They require global action and no effort is too small for them to take here for it to have reverberations in Somalia.